Hi James. Hello. So why don't you start off by telling us how you got into basketball? I got into basketball when I was in primary school. I think my sister went on one of the match day clinics that we still do now. Um, and then I think I went with my dad and then from then on just got into it. My neighbour at the time was part of the Chester Jets. Okay, never were back since? Yeah. yeah. Okay. So have you got any talents outside of uh, basketball? Talents? Musical talents, I'd say. <laughs> I can play the piano, um, a bit of the guitar. It's funny you say that. So uh, we've got a picture here. Would you like to just talk us through this one? <laughs> Um, this picture was actually a joke. Oh yeah. I believe, yeah. At university, um, we were actually taking the mic out of but I can actually play a bit of the, of the guitar. You started coaching, didn't you? Your first coaching role. Would you like to uh, just talk through this picture? Yeah. So this was the academy that I um, was in charge of at Hereford Sixth Form College, um, straight after I graduated, um, I got offered the job there to take over the academy. Um, yeah, the, there wasn't that many players at first, um, but we, we grew it and grew it, and I'm really proud of what we did there. It was a special place to work. How important would you say that is? How do you look back on these memories now? I wouldn't be where I am without the two years that I had at Hereford. Um, it taught me a lot. I worked with amazing people um, and an amazing boss who backed me in everything I wanted to do. Staff around me were amazing. Um, yeah, it, it was a big, big part in kind of my career um, that got me going. And I think it's, it's definitely one of the main reasons why I got the job here at Cheshire. Do you keep in contact with anybody? Yeah, I um, still speak to the assistant coaches that I had at the time. One of them is still there doing a really good job and Ryan who was my other assistant uh, is doing a really good job at Worcester University with the women's team. Um, so yeah, still stay in contact with them. Um, yeah, it was a very special time in my life. Would you say they're proud of you now? <laughs> I think so. Um, yeah, I hope so. They they always come to the games when we play when I play in Worcester and um, yeah the they stay in contact and yeah, I think they'd be proud. So you, you said uh, that you've been a lifelong Cheshire fan. Yeah. But this picture might say otherwise of uh, your time <laughs> at university. <laughs> yeah, um, that was actually the year Dizzy played played for them. This was <laughs> so I worked for the Wolves at the time. Um, that was at Wembley when they won the playoff final, which Dizzy was part of the team. Um, so yeah, I, I wore two hats that day, that day. They played. Newcastle Eagles and yeah I was I was all for Worcester. Anything else in university so anything particular did you get interested in any sort of societies any clubs? I was involved with the football society quite a lot because we used to have a lot of socials at our house. This picture of you dressed as <laughs> Harry Potter. <laughs> oh my god. Um, the university we we lo <laughs> we loved dressing up. Apparently look like Harry Potter, so I was Harry Potter for the for the night. I am a Potterhead. A Potterhead. Yeah. Talk us through this picture as well. <laughs> yeah. So so this was this was actually Worcester when I coached the under 18s team. So I was it was my first year in Hereford. I graduated, had the academy, and then I did the Worcester Wolves under 18s team. So that was that was a picture from from them. Put on a bit of weight since then. Good times. Did you find that time very influential on you now? Yeah, yeah. It was a big part of my life. Um, I enjoyed it. Um, great people to work with. Um, yeah, it was definitely shaped, shaped me to where to where get to where I am now. Um, yeah, I look back fond memories. How does it compare being on the other side of it now when you visit Worcestershire? Um, at first it was really weird, um, it, it was strange going back actually, but I, I, I love going back, it's, it's a great city, I was, I was there for five years and um, great people like I said and yeah I, I really enjoy going back when we play, um, play there, lots of friends come and watch, lots of people from, from my old work so 
lots of old players that I still stay in touch with. So yeah. Who would you say is one of the most uh, famous people you ever met? I met Jolien Lescott, an Everton player <laughs> who was a player for Everton at the time. I met him in New York. He, he's actually on the same table as me having dinner, so end up having dinner with him. I've actually met Will Smith, but randomly. Um, I can't think of. I don't know. So. The Fresh Prince, how about another prince? Oh, of course, yeah, I can't forget that. <laughs> yeah, so this was, this was actually the official opening of this facility here. Um, me and the chairman at the time, Mike Burton, were invited to meet the prince um, and talk about the Phoenix. Yeah, so this was actually the first time I'd stepped foot in this building. Um, and when he opened it, so yeah, that was that was a really cool day and that was a kind of a real eye opener to what I was getting into because obviously moving to Phoenix was a really big job for me and um, I was only 24 at the time and taking on the role, which was a big big role. So you know, meeting him, I remember after that thinking it's, it's another world and it's kind of. Never been the same since. <laughs> did it really hit home how big yeah, of a job you were taking on? It, it did, to be honest, because it was my obviously childhood club. I uh, grew up as a fan. I was the water boy um, for a season. So meeting, you know, a prince at the opening of a facility that I was about to pour my life into um, with with the club was yeah, it was a special day, surreal. Um, yeah. Obviously Mike taught you in school and he taught you everything you need to know about basketball. How did it feel when you were both uh, coaches? Um, yeah, it was a bit weird at first. Um, it, in a good way, I guess. Very interesting um, guy, you know, a lot of history, um, has a great legacy here at the club. So, it, to, you know, when he called, he, he rang me and he was saying that he was going to be the chairman of the club and um, he was looking for a general manager and at the time I was in Hereford and I, the first thing I said to him was, oh, I'm not sure actually, but I'm, I'll, I'll have a think. Uh, I thought he was basically asking if I knew anyone and he said, oh, no, no, I'm, I'm, I'm offering it to you. And, I, and it, that was just a crazy conversation and I was a bit taken back by it and honoured, to be honest, because you know, he's a tough taskmaster and um, I was very honoured that he thought of me um, to, to take on this, this role and so when I accepted it and moved it was, at, at first it was it was different working with him, you know, he's, he'd always been my teacher and coach but now we were kind of like colleagues so um, yeah, it, it, it is good, you know, I learned a lot from him still to this day and he, he's very knowledgeable and um, he has a great legacy here, as I say, so, yeah, it's good. Obviously, he taught you and Ben, so how does it feel now that all three of you? <laughs> yeah, and he taught uh, Richard Mannot as well, who was one of the assistants, so... Um, it, do you know what? It, I, it's really good because he... There's so much history here in Asmiport and Cheshire through basketball because of him, so to have the chairman played for him, the head coach played for him, the assistant coach played for him, the general manager played for him. Um, it, it's amazing really. Me and Ben especially are, are a lot to him. So you just mentioned you were the water boy, so here's a picture of you as the water boy. Well you can describe that to me. <laughs> yeah, this, this memories. So this here, I was the water boy uh, <laughs> of the team. I think it was 2004. Um, and yeah, the water boy the, of the Chester Jets. I heard you even got a medal. Uh, when do you keep that at home now? I have a box of stuff. For, I had I got two medals that year. I got a winner's medal and we got to play a final that year and lost. So I've got two medals from that season. So they're in a box at home with I collect everything that I that I, that I receive in basketball programs, medals, articles. I keep everything. So yeah, it's in a box at home. So. Obviously, lifting the BBL Cup two years ago now. Yeah. Um, one of the best days ever. Massive underdogs against my old team. You like you couldn't even write it. And something that we're desperate to get back to and make uh, make more of a habit of. But yeah, that 
That was a very special day. So it's been five years since you took on the role as GM. You looking forward to the next five? <laughs> yeah, yeah. I mean, it's been, you know, an interesting five years. We moved from Chester to here, so, you know, we've oversaw the transition um, into this facility and it's, you know, baby steps. We won a trophy. We won a first trophy in 11 years, I think. Um, so that was, that's amazing and, you know, we have a team on the floor that's really competitive and uh, and is challenging for all for titles every year. So yeah, the next five years you've just got to keep growing and moving forward and looking forward to be part of that. If you had to rank the first five years out of five, what are you ranking it? Mm, I'm gonna say 3.5 because we've got a lot a lot more to do. We need to be a lot further ahead in the next five years um, and more trophies, so solid three, 3.5.